All right, so in this training video, I'm going to be talking about the three different forms of locomotion that go along with ultra marathon racing. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because what I've witnessed and what I've seen is a lot of ultra runners are getting it wrong, where they only worry about one, maybe two forms of locomotion that will get them to the finish line. And this, if you watch this video all the way in to the end, I guarantee that this could be the difference between either having a really bad race and like turning it around to into a good race or possibly a DNF and or getting to the finish line. I was listening to a podcast with the, Jason Coop. He was hosting it and he was talking to another uh, triathlon coach and they were talking about the similarities between training for a triathlon and training for an ultra marathon. And you might be thinking like right away like there's no similarities. Like obviously in a triathlon you have swim, bike, run. Like how is swimming and biking other than from like a cardiovascular like endurance standpoint going to help me finish an ultra marathon? And if you know anything about Jason Coop, he is by far one of the top premier ultra marathon uh, coaches out there, but he has some good points. And so I wanted to like break down the points that he had in this video and get into the three forms of locomotion that correspond with ultra marathon racing. So if you're new to uh, my endurance life, I want to say welcome. My name is Eric. I am a USGO ultra running certified coach and I love running, talking about running and helping other runners like you become better runners. I make these videos to help not only inspire you along your training, but help you and I really want you to rethink possible because I believe that when you train with my endurance life that you will go further and faster than you ever thought possible. So if you're interested in more about training with My Endurance Life, you can download one of my free training guides at my website, myendurancelife.com, or just learn more about all the other services that I provide with uh, coaching and training on myendurancelife.com. You can pause this video and go there now because I know you'll forget, and then come back and watch it later. But uh, with that being said, let's get into the training. So. With a triathlon, like I said before, it's apparent that there are three distinct different forms of locomotion. Swim, bike, run. But how does that translate into ultra marathon running? Well, obviously you have the running part and that's what I'm gonna get to first. And as I go down, I'll um, re-emphasize how to transition from form one into form two into form three. And form three is gonna be key because I believe, and it's, I'm speaking from experience too because by deliberately training in this form, it saved my race, it's got me to the finish line when I didn't think I was going to finish, and it's also helped turn my races around from a bad race into a good race. So I encourage you to watch all the way to the end because form number three is going to be key into helping you be, just become not only a better ultra marathoner, but an ultra racer, um, whatever distance you're going to. And I'm going to break it down from the different distances 50k 50 mile 100k and 100 mile for those of you crazy people out there who like to run just all night and all day so um form number one is obviously running and as we're running in the different distances we should i, I try not to use the word should too much but i encourage my athletes to run using a form uh, or a technique called RPE, or Rate of Perceived Effort, knowing that this is an effort level that I can continue on for the duration of the race. And it's going to be a lot different between road running and ultra marathon racing, just because of the trail technicality or the elevation profile. Um, you know, a 10K and a 50K is a totally different sport really. Uh, even the distance, the extra five miles from completing a marathon to completing a, a 50k, that five miles from a road marathon perspective for in the average marathon runner finishing in that four to five hour range. If you just continue that same pace for the next five miles, you're going to finish in under an hour. Whereas in a 50k that you might be looking at six, eight or more hours depending on how much elevation or tech technical the trail was so that five miles the extra hours time on feet is just it's not it's not even relative between road running and ultra marathon running that's that's the point i'm trying to get so what i encourage our athletes so let's, let's use um an average athlete with um good fitness level 
uh, has put in the consistency, put in the work, and is going to run a 50K. I encourage them to run in a rate of perceived effort around a three or four. Whereas if they were running a marathon, they'd be in a five, six, just because the time duration is so much different. You know, a four to five hour finish or a six to eight hour finish. That extra time, you're, you need to slow down to be able to not only preserve your energy, but also take in the required fuel and hydration to get you to the finish line. It might be hot out there, it might be cold. Um, you it might be tons of hills. So learning how to stay in that lower rate of perceived effort for that race is gonna not only allow you to preserve your energy to keep running towards the finish line, but also take in the required fuel that you need. Because at a higher effort level, our blood is getting transferred to different parts of our bodies, mainly our legs. And once you get into that five, six range, that there's so much blood being concentrated to our legs and to our arms, because we use our arms a lot as you know, as we're running, that not a lot is going to our stomachs. When we lower our rate of perceived effort, it allows more blood to get to our stomachs to help digest the food and process the food and, hide, and liquid that we're consuming to get back into our muscles, to help us finish. So, for 50K, 50 milers, I encourage our athletes, if they're in that good fitness zone, to run at a rate of perceived effort of a 3-4. Now, once you get into that 100K, 100 mile range, we drop all the way down to a 2-3. And a 2-3 is like that forever pace where I can just keep going and going and going because 100K, 100 mile, that's what you're doing. You're running all day and into the night and then through the night if you're doing those 100 milers. So by lowering our rate of perceived effort even lower, not only can we continue at that effort level for a long, 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 long time, but it's also easier to take in our nutrition, drink our liquids, stay um, cognitive, remember that we have to do this stuff, and be able to like talk to our crew or aid station workers when we get there because we're not so exhausted. Um, lowering that is gonna help you just stay on pace to finish those longer distances. And then also, when you're running these longer races, you know that we're not running the entire time, which brings us into form number two, hiking. And I know you already know, because chances are you're already an ultra marathon runner or you're practicing for an ultra marathon, and you've already used hiking as part of your strategy for that race. You know that at some point in the race, you're gonna start hiking. But what I really wanna emphasize is when to transition from a hike to a run or from a run to a hike. And then obviously, you know, uh, the incline of the hill that you're gonna be hiking up is gonna be um, the determining factor, but I want to use an example from my own personal training experience. I was training for a 100 mile race, and I had my training schedule called for back to back 50Ks. So this was day two of my back to back 50Ks, and what I had, had done is I had made a six mile loop around my local trails that brought me back to, the, to my truck every loop so I could use my truck as an aid station to simulate a race scenario, which is a great strategy um, if you're not using other training races as training. Just find a loop, use your vehicle or you know somebody as an aid station so you can simulate a race. But it was the, my last two laps of my back-to-back -back 50Ks and my wife wanted to come out and join me. And I, at this point, I was like totally for somebody to run with. I you know ran six hours a day before. I was you know going a little bit slower today and I was on like hours six or seven, probably gonna end up running eight hours for that 50K. And then so my wife joined me and I was jogging up this particular hill that I had jogged all day yesterday, all day you know today, and I'm just you know chopping it up, going up it. And I look back at my wife and she's hiking next to me, carrying our conversation easier than I was jogging. So that's when I was like, man, like, even though I can run this hill, I probably shouldn't because it's making me tired -er than if I was hiking. And she's having a lot better time hiking up it than I am running. So it's not only good from a nutritional um, strength, like uh, maintaining your energy levels, but maybe also it can help you just like, from a mental capacity, like, okay, I can hike this, I'm looking forward to a hike, 
instead of running and that will encourage you just to hike the hills instead of run the hills even though you can um, especially for those longer distances 100k and 100 mile and then for those 100 mile people 100k even when we start getting into the night like oftentimes when people are in that death march where it's just like just willpower keeping them going that I believe that if we use this third form which I believe is the most important form to train in because nobody does it nobody deliberately trains in this third form they fall back to a, they fall back to it as a last resort which is walking and there's a difference between walking hike and hiking we obviously we hike up a hill that you know we can use our poles uh, and we can hike up a hill but walking is on those flat or downhills and strategically and deliberately training on how to walk with a purpose keeping our elbows up and like looking like those olympians and you're trying to walk as fast as we can we can get really good at walking which is not only going to save our race because walking with a purpose is going to save us from that dreaded death march you know when people are just like slugging along or taking dirt naps you've seen them if you've ever done a 100 mile those people who are just like everything it's taking everything they got to keep moving moving forward but what i've done and what i encourage my athletes to do is walk with a purpose during the day work in using four ones deliberately strategically during the day where you map out a section of course that's flat you look at the elevation of the race you're doing and if you have a long like eight six or even ten mile or longer section break it up into strategic walk walks run for four minutes and then walk with a purpose and then you can get good enough to walk at a 16 15 14 13 minute mile which is not only going to save you time over the long run because you're going to preserve your energy so you don't get stuck in the aid stations longer trying to get your energy back and muster up the willpower to get out there and start running again that you can use these walking breaks to take on nutrition take in hydration fiddle with your stuff but you're not losing a lot of time because now you're not walking at an 18 or 20 minute mile like everybody else who didn't practice by practicing on how to walk fast and walking with a purpose you're just going to kill it and crush it when you get out there on your next ultra marathon so i encourage you that walk with a purpose use it strategically in your races um in the middle of the night during the day uh in and out of aid stations, it's gonna to totally revolutionize and change the way you look at your ultra racing. So I encourage you, if you wanna learn more about uh, how to walk with a purpose or using rate of perceived effort in your training and your running, uh, by all means, go to my website, click on the training and coaching tab and take your fit test. The fit test is not a physical fitness test. It is a fit test to see if you and I are gonna be the right match because building out a training plan for me is the easy part but what's more important and better for us is if you and I are a fit personality wise and this is the first step in your fit test um, to get to work with me train the my endurance life wave if you like simple easy training using block a block format that will strategically get you to your race goals focused on rate of perceived effort then my endurance life and the training that we do is for you so visit myenduranceLife.com, click on the coaching tab or download one of my free training guides and i hope to see you um in this video or not you already watched this video but in upcoming videos so if you haven't subscribed yet make sure to like and subscribe leave a comment when you're there and let me know if you are going to start implementing these three forms of training into your ultra running talk to you soon and see you on the next video